One of the uh, things that's happened recently has been that a uh, Pfizer Corporation has recently stopped all research and development in the field of lipid research and hypertension research and um, has con decided to concentrate all their research and development in the field of cancer. And one of the questions that's arisen uh, nationwide is, why did Pfizer do this? It takes about uh, 20 years of research in a particular topic before you finally get to a product that gets you to where you need to be. And what's happening is, is that Pfizer has recognized that there's been a major paradigm break. And the fact is, is that we now have found the source of hypertension and at least a partial source and the source of atherosclerosis. And um, so what we're going to be doing, dealing with is uh, what is happening in this whole field. During this presentation, you will learn how to measure the efforts, the effect of nitric oxide on the body, and how this information is a predictor of heart disease. Now, in patients with fibromyalgia, they have a problem with nitric oxide deficiency, and now we're finding out that there's more to it than just fibromyalgia. The endothelial dysfunction is characterized by an impaired bioavailability or bioactivity of endothelial-derived nitric oxide. Now, you notice that uh, you have the tunica adventitia on the outside. Towards the middle, here's the lumen of the blood vessel, and towards this one layer of uh, cells is the tunica intima, and that is where the, all the action is taking place. So these cells along the inside of a blood vessel are, is what make up the endothelium, and this is where we're going to be concentrating. Now, the normal elast, uh, blood vessel, I mean the arterial wall, contains the endothelial cells, the elastic connective tissue, and the smooth muscle cells. This particular uh, tissue here, the elastic connective tissue, is what allows for the elasticity of a blood vessel, and it's this tissue that gets altered in the presence of copper deficiency, and this is the problem where the patients have uh, problems with uh, aortic aneurysms. So copper deficiency has now been shown to be due to a defective enzyme inside this area, uh, and is the source of uh, the problem with uh, aneurysms. You have these one-layered cells that make the membrane of the, uh, or the, one la the inner lining of a blood vessel, and they have their junctions and so on uh, in that area. Now, a blood vessel basically has the ability to constrict or to uh, dilate. So you dilate or constrict, and that's how you control blood pressure and do all the marvelous things that the uh, blood vessels can do. The physiology of nitric oxide is, is that there is a enzyme inside the blood vessels that's called endothelial nitric oxide synthetase. It catalyzes the synthesis of uh, nitric oxide from L-arginine, the amino acid. This, synth this ability to make nitric oxide is dependent upon what's that, what is that term right there, NADH. Where does that come from? Niacin. This is why when you take niacin, it gives you a flush. And the ability to flush is dependent upon the presence of, of uh, niacin and oxygen, and, there, and you make the uh, nitric oxide from the endothelial nitric oxide synthetase, and the byproduct of this is L-citrulline, uh, water nitric oxide, NADP, and another byproduct of this is creatine. So you can, you know, if you in, uh, decrease the resistance to flow, you vasodilate a blood vessel, increase resistance to flow, you vasoconstrict. The sources of problems with endothelial dysfunction include that of a sedentary lifestyle, hypertension, hypercholesterolemia, diabetes, 
heart, to, uh, heart failure, estrogen withdrawal, aging, smoking, homocysteine, uh, elevated homocysteine, Prince metal angina, and atherosclerosis. I want to tell you up front that we now know that if you can increase the ability of the endothelial cells to make nitric oxide, that you can literally erase atherosclerosis. We are talking about within a period of five to 10 years, we can take a blood vessel full of atherosclerosis and literally erase everything that's there. That's how significant this lecture is to you guys because the paradigm has been broke, okay? So the more you understand about what's going on here, the better you'll be. Sedentary lifestyle, increased exercise, increases nitric oxide production. Hypertension decreases nitric oxide production. Hypercholesterolemia, increased lipids in the bloodstream, decreased nitric oxide production. Diabetes, the elevated blood sugar, decreases the ability of the body to make nitric oxide. Heart failure, that same thing. Estrogen withdrawal, this is a very common thing. You'll notice that women, because of their high estrogen levels, virtually have no heart disease. They don't start developing heart disease until they're about 55 and beyond. Why? Because the estrogen is no longer stimulating them to make nitric oxide. It also turns out that in men with prostate cancer, <clears throat> that one of the risk factors in, heart in prostate cancer is estrogen. And so we give chemicals and supplements to decrease the estrogen production in men. But what's happening is, is that when we do that, we are, de we, are, we are decreasing their estrogen to decrease stimulation of the uh, uh, prostate, but in the process, we increase their potential for atherosclerosis. So we don't, we can't, we don't want to take the estrogen levels down to zero. We want to bring them down, but we don't want to take them down to zero because you need estrogen. Men need estrogen just to help them stimulate them to make nitric oxide. Homocysteine stim uh, inhibits the making of nitric oxide. Aging, the gene for uh, making nitric oxide starts going down in activity at age 40 and beyond. You'll notice that uh, nitric oxide is what vasodilates a blood vessel, drops your blood pressure. At age 25, there's about 1% of the population of the 25-year-olds that have hypertension. By the time you are 65 years old, 66% of you right here are going to have hypertension. So hypertension as you get older, and it's basically a problem of lack of nitric oxide. End result is atherosclerosis. And so we'll talk about that more as we go along. Now, risk factors for endothelial damage is oxidative stress, endothelial dysfunction, inflammation. The inner lining of our blood vessels is the endothelium. It plays a central role in regulation of vasomotor tone and local homeostasis and control of the coagulation process. Endothelial cells have sensors and release mediators. These mediators are the functional molecules on the cell surface. Now, most of you uh, probably wonder why we need to take all these antioxidants that we do, and that's because oxidant stress and endothelial function are major factors for atherosclerosis the common pathway. For most of the cardiovascular risk factors include that of hypertension, diabetes, hyperlipidemia, and smoking. Both endothelial function and oxidative stress result in clinical conditions such as heart failure um, and myocardial infarctions and ischemic heart disease. Vascular endothelial mediators including, include the following. That is, is that nitric oxide works as a vasodilator, cyclooxygenase, endothelium-1, endothelial uh, depolarizing factor, and many others. Thus, what ends up happening is, is that the endothelial cells of the body make a multitude of different chemicals that can help control the vasodilation, vasoconstriction of the blood vessel, 
and these, uh, these endothelial cells basically have become a, uh, endo a, an endocrine or organ in their own right. 